personal things on in advance of Consecration Sunday to talk about the service and give us a perspective. We know we love our internet service. We know we can complain about poor customer service. We hear about living in a service economy. But what does it really mean to be service and serving God here? I want to break it down into two parts. Personal service and service in unison. So let's, let's hear what uh, Paul tells us in his letter to the Romans. Romans 12. Therefore, I urge, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and prove what God's will is. God's good, pleasing, and perfect will. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Paul goes on a phrase or two later to tell us to behave like a Christian, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. But this is the backdrop to personal service. I read it as getting out there. Getting outside yourself in a personal way, devotion of time, devotion of talent. I took a minute to reflect on how I jumped into serving, and it took me back to my days in Chicago, where I was from Catholic, didn't have a connection to the church. But I started getting in touch when I met Carol. Carol was a part of the Lincoln Park Presbyterian Church or was attending, and she invited me. <clears throat> I went, being open-minded, and I started to realize there was more. There was something I didn't have. So we know the, the little kid uh, uh, rhyme about, here's the church, here's the people, open the door, see all the people. Well, I did see all the people. And I finally figured out that, perhaps older age, you know what, I could be doing more. Something struck me to say, get involved with the church, do something. I also was invited at that time, shortly thereafter, as church attended you. I got invited to teach. Well, teach. I was very insecure about my Bible knowledge, but they were offering me a position to teach first and second graders. This I could do. <laughs> I can handle a little story books, but I still had to say. I, I went back with this group, and I learned step by step story by story, what the Bible is, what it can inform, in that, in that sense, first and second graders, but I was learning on my journey to reach, to take outside of myself, to get and pull into my life. Uh, literally baby steps is how I started, and yes, the Presbyterian uh, group did eventually have me four years as a session uh, member, but that was over time, and that was the process. What did I learn? Why was I, I don't know where, the, where it clicked, but I knew that I needed something new. And my reasons were not so much like the Romans. I didn't know that so at that point, but I did know that selfishly I was growing and that something was necessary. So I leave you with, in a personal sense, not only is it pleasing to God, Paul tells us that, but in a very selfish way, we get to connect with others by reaching out. We find out what we're all about in the interactions with others. There are plenty of activities here at the church to do that, to get outside your comfort zone. It means being a good steward, participating, working, committees, lunches, Bible activities with the classes, and youth activities outside of this building. If we can please God, and if we can make ourselves grow, that sounds like a super to me. Let's jump into service for in unison now. Paul also tells us in a section of Romans, just uh, proceeding from the past, last one, for just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members.
members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Our financial giving within this building, within this institution, is a way for us to pull together. Paul wants us to feel we are the body of Christ in unison, and by pulling our dollars into action, every week we make God's mission come true, whether it's local, district, uh, leadership of our church, Ruth's place, as in this afternoon, our missionaries across the sea, congregational support in grief and in pleasure and in ceremonies, celebrations, study, all these come together through a corporate, unified giving. So we can also look at ourselves and say we are ourselves contributing, but we are so much more in numbers. Both are important. We dedicate ourselves to a single body in unison to the mission of Christ, getting in here to make a difference. And yeah, there have been times when Caroline have had financial struggles, when Ari was at Utah with her uh, presidential treatment center, when I lost my job three years ago. There have been down times, and that's going to happen to all of us. But I remember stepping up in a different way and saying, personal, I, I didn't do the math, but it was basically, what can I do instead? And I did help with the men's group activities, we did some spiritual things there. I remember reaching out to folks, connecting more one-on-one, -on -one, again, a little bit of out of yourself. Giving and receiving is so much the same when we talk about this type of serving. 